for some months. I've not been using the gas. So when I got there, we saw they were filling the they were refilling their own. But unfortunately for them, the gas exploded. Many people died, but God saved me from fireborn. I want to give all return to God for all things I've done. Thank you. You shall not be a victim in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. My name is Ode Maria. I was here on Thursday with my son. So when we finish our morning devotion, this boy says his stomach pain is paining. I say, ah, how can I do now? This one that I'm looking for small, small money, keeping it for your school. You start again. How can I do? He say, Mama, this thing is drawing so much. I say, okay, let me give a call to my daddy in the law. So when we call Pastor Tony now, he say, okay, I should quickly come. That I will go out by nine. I say, no problem. When we carry the Okada down to this, uh, uh, our church promises, my picking lie down for outside flat. It's by force that I will take this boy to up. When we go to Pastor Tony now, he now pray. He give him water and anointing. And he say, Mama, take him to the altar to lie down to the altar. So when we come to the altar now, the boy started running up and down through the altar. Then the mama come down, they started praying. So after some time, the stomach pain gone. And we stand here till Aradaka about how many hours? We do not hear anything. The boy that cannot stand up is the one that get up for this altar and say, Mama, let's go to daddy up and thank dad and go home. I'm free. And I know he's free indeed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever follows you here shall not follow you out in the name of Jesus. Your name and what the Lord did in brief. Praise the Lord. My Hallelujah. name is Israel Savior. Two weeks ago, I was at the school and I was totally broke down, financially broke down. I now pray to God, Father, you know it is time for us to pay school fees. Make a way out for me. So, weekend, towards the weekend, I got a call from someone in Abuja and I asked, Israel, where are you? I said, sir, I'm in Lafia. It's okay, come over to my office in Abuja. I have a work for you. Getting there, the man said, okay, it's a new office. Just look at it, think of what to create and make, make it for me. I do furniture work. So I now said, okay, after I think of it, he now said, okay, I should go and get the quotation down and estimate and give it to the secretary. Getting there, I now did everything and I give it to the secretary and the contract was signed. And I did the work successfully. Also, I want to thank God for adding extra more one year for me today. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever be your heart desire, God is delivering unto you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Your name and what the Lord did for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Elizabeth Moses. I'm here to testify the goodness of God over the life of my brother. Some over more than four months, he was nowhere to be found. No contact, nothing. All efforts tried to reach him prove abortive. So some people came to me telling me that they used to see him, that he's like, he's not normal, he's so mentally disordered. I was like, my brother, my other brother, he said yes. Because these people, they know, he, they know him very well. So my friend again came. He was the fourth, she was the fourth person that came and met me that, that they saw him or that he's mad, he's wrong in the way he's doing, that he's not normal. I said, ah, you are the fourth person that is telling me this. How come? So we tried to reach him, no way. We couldn't even ask of him through anybody. So I told my younger brothers that look at what I'm here, we know. They said to them they have not heard of. So I told my dad. So I told them that let's pray oh, so that because it was not long we lost our mom, so that affliction will not rise again in this family. So at midnight I took water from Goshen, where I worship in, in Abuja. So I fetched water from the tap. I went home. That night I woke up by 2 a.m. I put his picture inside a bowl. I poured the water. I squeezed the picture. I said, now, anywhere you are, arrest your spirit through this water that you come back to your normal sense in the name of Jesus. So the following day, I came back to school. The Papa announced seven days prayer and fasting. I engaged in prayer, in seven days prayer and fasting, believing God for divine healing. On Sunday, which I ended the fasting, on Monday, early morning, he called me with a strange number. That Elizabeth, it's me, your elder brother. Call me back. I said, wait, let me run by card. I rushed to get a time. I called him. I said, what happened? He said, it's okay. Where are you? He told me where he is. I said, some group of people call, come and meet me that you are not normal, that you are mad. He said, no, that is okay. I said, okay. 
He now gave me message to give to my people. So I've come to return all the glory to God. No affliction shall hold you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is the doer of this great acts? In our step position, let me to our seven as we appreciate God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You are the doer of these great things. We give you the glory, we give you the praise. And Jesus, precious name, we have given thanks. The next testifier shall be your very self in the name of Jesus Christ. I have to go for the Lord. And your family, it will be broken today. Amen. Make that amen louder. Amen. No one of you will live here with a trace of generational curse. Say a better amen. amen. So shall it be. Amen. Any family here under tears, I decree by this service today you will go back with laughter. Amen. I say you will go back with laughter. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. After this service today, causes will not be your identity. Amen. The blessings of God will reflect in every area of your life. Amen. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. Make that amen louder again. Amen. In the first service, we looked at breaking foundational and generational cause of poverty. One of the things Jesus died for is to bring you out of poverty unto riches. You know, we have only been celebrating freedom from sin, not knowing that there is also freedom from poverty. And because we have not been celebrating it, we have not been walking consciously to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because what you don't desire, you will never attract. If you don't desire it. Well, here, the truth is this. No matter how this message is hot, there are people that still will not desire to be rich. Do you know why? They think that being poor makes them holy. Now lie. There is no rich man. Eh? I mean, there is no poor man that is holy. In fact, your poverty nullifies your holiness. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, your, poverty, your poverty is a mockery to your holiness. Do you know what? If you are not rich, there are certain people you cannot reach. Am I saying the truth? Come. As you are dressed now, come, climb up. Are you afraid? As you are dressed now, and you want to minister to someone, if the person sees the way you are dressing, you go cool down first. <laughs> Three of us. That's what you be. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I remember one day I walked into Equatorial Trust Bank, then in Worry. The whole place was rowdy. I just entered. I just sat down. I didn't know that somebody was looking at me. The manager just came from nowhere. Just came and said, Good morning, sir. How can we help you? He said, My name is Pastor Tony Amifle. She stepped back. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He said, Pastor, do pastors dress like this? I said, I don't know where you are coming from. But where I'm coming from, dressing is our culture. So she said, follow me, sir. How much are you collecting? I said, 100,000. She just, I didn't spend five minutes. I just collected. And people were still making noise. <laughs> I left. If I had entered there with bedroom slippers, she wouldn't have seen me. Do you know that poverty hides you? 
<laughs> Poverty hides you. It will hide you. When you are poor, good people won't see you. Am I saying the truth? Well, it's still a choice either to enter heaven like Abraham or you enter like Lazarus. <laughs> so you choose the one, how you enter. <laughs> eh? Who wants to go like Lazarus? You see, now you don't want to raise your hand. <laughs> Poverty is a cause. It's a cause. If it is not a cause, it shouldn't have been mentioned that Jesus was made poor so that we might become rich. It shouldn't have been mentioned. So don't be celebrating it. Leave me as I do. <laughs> I won't leave you. That's why this church is the home of the prosperous. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's why when you are coming to church, say, oh, you don't need to go to that rich man church. Who like to be poor? Nobody. Is there a poor man church? I want to let you know God will change your story. Yes. Hear it again, God will change your story. Yes. This service we are focusing on breaking the yoke and foundational cause over families. The cause of non-achievement. The cause of stagnation. The cause of untimely death. The cause of shame. Like I said before, causes are not destiny friendly. No cause can help your destiny rise, but rather causes make destiny sink. Causes makes destiny crash. Much more importantly, generational causes are wicked weapons in the hand of the devil to afflict a destiny and much more a family. Like I did in the first service, I would like us to know what are causes. And how does it become generational? A cause is a force, an evil force, working against an individual or the family. It creates a benchmark that no one can ever cross. A cause is a counterforce that fights an individual or a family any time a blessing is about to be announced. A cause is an evil word or an arrow spoken to hinder, to limit to tie down a life or a family. A cause is to be greeted with failure when success is smiling at you. A cause is an evil sentence pronounced over an individual, over a family to bring destruction and to waste. A cause is an evil spiritual energy 
delegated, mandated to work havoc on the person, on the family, until they become desolate. A cause is struggling without corresponding fulfillment. A cause is when your presence generates hatred and resentment. A cause makes an individual to be displaced from his place of destiny. Let me mention this before we move on. A cause mobilizes the universe to work against you and work against your family. Causes are generational because they are transferred through parents. Majority of what people are going through now are what they inherited from their parents. Two things are bound to take place. Either you inherit blessings from your family or you inherit liabilities. We read it in the first service, Proverbs 13 and verse 22. A good man liveth an inheritance for his children, children. What will you leave for your own children? When generational causes are not dealt with, it has the power and capacity to empty the family. Gradually. When generational causes are not broken, no star will rise in that family. An unbroken generational cause has the power to swallow opportunities and open the family to disgrace. That's why you that I'm seeing now, you must stand for your family. Amen. If you are saying amen, say good amen. amen. One person can stand for his family. And that's why in the third service, I'll be focusing on you alone. You, you alone. Scripture says, and Jacob was left alone. For service, you will be left alone. It must be well with you first before it be well with any other person. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But now we are looking at families. I tell you the truth, if I didn't take some daring, dangerous steps, <laughs> including me, I would have been a struggler. Daring, when I mean daring, you confront what others are dreading to confront. Esther said, if I perish, I do what? I perish. There are things to be confronted. The blessings of God are in families. Right from the time of Noah to the time of Moses, the blessings of God are in families. Which we call family gates now. Are you hear what I'm saying now? But because of the witchcraft in Africa, are you hearing me? This gate is against this gate. This gate is not happy that this gate is prospering. This gate is not happy that the heads have been lifted. You must defend your gate. I say you must defend your gate. Family causes tends to be the focal point of the enemy. Why? 
The power behind family causes is what we call ancestral causes. Ancestral causes. Ancestral causes is what makes cause to be transferred from your great grandfather to your grandfather to your father to where you are now. And they manifest in the lives of the people through their ancestral lineage. So what we inherited is what we call transfer of liability, transfer of shame, transfer of reproach, transfer of backwardness, transfer of bondage. I just remember one of the associate pastors I met in one of my stations. From the family he married, all the husbands that married the ladies from that family, they have accidents and one of their legs is broken. He didn't understand it until I was doing this teaching. Which means there is a, a demonic power in the ladies' family that made sure that anyone that comes to marry from there, they must break their leg one by one. <laughs> I'm not joking. Even his car, he was assigned to a, one of the mission stations. Even his car was wrecked. And they didn't do anything about it. I said, no, I am here to correct it. You are an official assignment. If that happens, the ministry takes responsibility for that. They couldn't believe it. I say, shut up. I'm the one to teach you the policy. You are not the one to teach me the policy. Keep quiet. So I just gave him 400000 to put the car back in order. But the damage has been done. Are you hear what I'm saying now? It's not the ministry that broke the leg. There was something full. Hear this? You know all you young boys now that are saying, that, he's in love, he's in love. We love ourselves. Hear me, you are marrying the family God. So you fight the family battle. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That is the reason why we insist you go know the family you are marrying from. There's what we call family archives. There are family archives. There are histories that will not be mentioned. They will prefer to keep that place quiet. May your marry go. Make it no, no. But the day the man knows, I hope you know the marriage will no longer be sweet. That's why it's good to tell the person everything. If there are issues to be prayed about, so that we start praying early. Some they will pretend they will not keep, they will just keep quiet. There are demonic archives. And the day it is being discovered, your relationship don't they finish? I was a young, promising career, a doctor, a female. A young man came from U.S. and said he wants to marry her. They didn't know. Just celebrating, he came from Obodo Yibo, Obodo Yibo. Before you know what's happening, they got married. And the only thing the guy could succeed in giving to her is STD. High level STD. There are grades of STD. Am I correct, doctor? Anytime I call doctor, you will bow your head. What you there? <laughs> there are grades of STD. Her case was that terrible to the point that pus was coming out from her vagina. Pus, pus. It was that humility. So when she discovered it, the young man ran away. First thing they did was to return the bride price. They returned it. So, since she didn't tell me, my associate now told me, say, sir, there is something. Because I, I was always seeing her 
with injection. She was always carrying injection plaster. I said, why are you always carrying this thing? She didn't want to tell me, Master, she now caught me by the side. Sigh is a long story. <laughs> and I told him, I'm interested. What is the story? What is the story? So he now took me by the side. He said, the guy that I married her, he didn't know that he was afflicted. He had this STD, the high level one. And the guy has gone. I said, does that mean she should suffer? Jesus must bail her out. So I told her, follow me. She came to church. I ministered to her. I opened scripture. And I started ministering her communion and the anointing. That was how little by little the thing wiped out. She has remarried. has remarried. Ancestral powers, they have charge over generation, one generation to another. And they keep everyone in the family in bondage. Jesus said, the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So the mission of ancestral power is to wreck families. Bring them to the state of non-entities. Ancestral powers, they also assign afflictions. They don't only keep people in captivity. There's what we call collective captivity. That is what this one is suffering, the next one is suffering it. What this one is also suffering, the next one is suffering it. You will not be thinking it's your family portion. No, it is there because there is an ancestral stronghold keeping everyone in the family in that bondage. Ancestral forces, they also constitute principalities in the heavenlies against the families. They block the stars in the families. They fight any star that wants to rise. Hear me? It is time to fight back. Yeah. You better say a good amen. amen. Because your star must rise. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Ancestral um, powers, they are also delegated to execute punishment upon families and also execute the punishment. We are going to see them one by one. Now, ancestral powers physically, in physical manifestation, in family, they have what we call evil family trees. There are trees that should not be touched. True of us. Some trees that should not be touched. They say, hey, no, these are family trees. Hey. They even celebrate the family tree. Like I was telling my pastors the other day, some years back, they told me of a particular farmland in my family that I nobody dares enter for the past 67 years. My dad was still alive when they told me that thing. So I confronted the, the next elderly person. He just laughed at him and said, what people of old didn't do, is it you, this small boy, that will do it? He said, you better go and think of your life. Oh. So I kept quiet. I didn't talk again. So he passed on. Some years back again, the next elderly person came and told me, he said, that thing that you talked about that time in the farm, 
I think we can pray. I say, yes, we can pray. It's okay, let's pray. So we're in a fast. I think that fast lasted almost 52 or 53 days or 54 days. The last day of that fast, come and see Arrow. They were shooting me gone in the dream as if I was uh, sent to Af Afghanistan. <laughs> I'm not joking, no. That was the first time in my pastoral life that I knew what they call the tree of life. You know, Jesus is the tree of life. I just stood by the tree. They finished all their bullets. My Bible now turned into gone. I became a spiritual rambo. Don't clap, don't clap. It doesn't call for clapping. I said, no, no, you must escape. As I finished, I woke up in the dream. I was sweating. I was now asking, should I go or should I not go? Why is it that a day to the journey, this is what I'm seeing. I knew the forces were angry. But I made up my mind to go. I still traveled. On the, on the way, robbers attacked us. That's the first time that I saw bullets. And the thing didn't shoot. The robbers ran away. I still went back. When I finally reached the village and I told them that we are going tomorrow, everybody said, no be my head. They said they are not going again. That they are not going. This compound says it's not going. This compound says it's not going. This compound says it's not going. So I told my brother, you, you, stand at my back. My other brother, my junior brother, I said, both of you, stand at my back. Whatever will happen, let this thing come and face me. So the, the other elderly one said, okay, since you say you will go, we will go. So that day I spoke in tongues. My mouth was dry. We carried the blood, carried the oil. This one is small. Carry that one that looked like logo's air bottle. <laughs> Empty the place. I, I bathed that farm with the blood. After we finished, when it was farming season, I said they should clear everything. When they now cleared it, the ones that didn't go, they wanted to come and carry firewood. I called them, I said, drop the firewood. Or all the things that I've chased out from that place, I will send them to your house. <laughs> I said, nobody enter that farm. The farm is my own. I'm the one to share and give you portion. If you enter, I will call the team back and call you. Come on. <laughs> and all of them behave now. Yes. Who entered there? Amen. Esther said, if I perish, I do what? Amen. So Lord, then clear for road. So I told my mom, go and farm the thing. I mean, I mean, get the farm. When you farm finish, I can now share for them. But you know what? It was, it was like an evil forest that could not be entered. I said, God forbid. The earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof. Which one say nobody go enter? We are still from India today. Are you wrong saying now? If you don't deal with them, they will deal with everyone in the family. When your father and your mother gave back to you, they transfer to you their genes. And that is from the place we got the word generation. Generation. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That is why our genes are responsible for our behavioral pattern, our laughter, our talk, our looks. So the same way we look physically is the same identity they transfer to us spiritually. We're going to see them now scripturally one by one. But thank God for Jesus. He came to reverse the pattern. The old evil pattern. We are going to take a look at some of the things that was transferred. Adam transferred sin to all. So everyone suffered what we call spiritual death. 
No wonder scripture says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Why? Because Adam transferred sin to everyone. Are you what I'm saying now? Abraham, scripture says he paid tithe, and that tithe affected Levite. Levi. So Abraham, by spiritual implication, was transferring generational blessings. Am I correct? Now, in Abraham's family, lying took place. Lie, lie. Abraham lied that Sarah was his sister. Isaac lied that Rich, Rachel was his sister. Am I correct? So, from there now, Jacob, the master liar. He was, he was the pro. He was playing the super league of liars. The firstborn of Isaac was named Ishmael. Am I correct? Very irresponsible. Esau. Likewise, Isaac had was the firstborn of Reuben, who was a non-entity. The curse on Reuben was only lifted in Deuteronomy 33. When Moses came on the scene, I said, let Reuben live and not die. And let not his men be few. So you could trace generational curse from Abraham's family. Now Sarah was barren for 25 years. Rebecca, 20 years. Jacob's wife was also barren for a season before God visited her. Am I saying the truth? So you could see the trace of generational causes. They inherited it. Also, Abraham, we are shouting, Abraham, blessings are mine. Let's see the other side now. Abraham slept with his house girl, with his housemaid. Two of us. Jacob also slept with his housemate, two of us. So you can see, the team was just moving one by one. Now, when I came to David's family, a man after God's heart, David was a womanizer. When he was supposed to be in West Ma go rest. From resting, you now see from his uh, window. Man, who be that woman? He now called his PA. Who owns that house? Who owns that house? He says uh, Uriah is the one commanding the 34 armored battalion. Okay, okay. So he now called the commander in chief. Please. Uriah should be in the front. Send him to Sambisa. <laughs> they now sent Uriah to Sambisa. And that's how they killed Uriah. And David collected the wife. Collected the wife. What David did was a toy. Solomon came. Solomon came as Baba. He had how many wives? How many wives? No, he had 300 wives, 700 concubines, which means they were sharing it three, three per day. Am I correct? One person is in charge of the morning, another person is in charge of the afternoon, and that person is in charge of af night. After that day, their service has finished for the, for the year. Another set we take. <laughs> now you are talking about uh, Solomon. When his son Rehoboam came, you have not heard of Rehoboam. You will hear of Rehoboam today. Second Chronicles chapter 11. Let's read verse 26. 
But the word of the Lord. You didn't get it. Second Chronicle 11. I think it's verse 26. It's not correct. When Rehoboam came, when Rehoboam came, scripture say he had more wives. Say with me, more wives. He vowed to beat his father's record. Okay, look at verse 21, sorry. And Rehoboam loved Micah, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his concubines. For he took 18 wives and three score concubines and beget 20 and 8 sons and three score daughters. You see, pause there. Two things show there. What Absalom did, someone came to do him back. You didn't see Absalom there? See it now. Is your eye blind? And Rehoboam loved Micaiah, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and concubines. He said he had more concubines. Scripture didn't tell his own quantity. They only mentioned Solomon's own. But his own, they couldn't mention it more. What is meaning of more? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Scripture said what? More. He had more concubines. So if there is anything that must be dealt with, trace it. Trace it and deal with it. If you don't deal with it, it will deal with you. And you know the amazing thing? Whatever you fail to deal with now, we wait for you when a breakthrough is about to be announced. It will deal with you. I remember I mentioned sometime here, a senior manager in a bank, I won't call the name of the bank, he has risen to the status of a regional manager, controlling big cities. All of a sudden now, he now said that the wife's breast is small. But when he found her, the breast was not small. You don't burn one, burn two, burn three, burn four. It's this small. Now he has risen to the level of a regional manager. And one dolly party has appeared. So, my pastor now called me. Sir, I have a couple here. I can't deal with this counseling. You know? I don't know what to tell the man. I don't know what to tell the woman. I said, what's the problem? He said, the man said that the wife's breast is small. <laughs> so, I asked him, who is he? He said, he's a regional manager in one of the banks. I won't call the bank. So, I said, go back. Put the phone on speaker. Let me talk. I said, God bless you, sir. How are you? He said, fine. I said, my name is Pastor Tony. So, so. He said, God bless you, sir. I'm pleased to hear your voice, sir. I said, God bless you. I said, should I tell you something? He said, yes, sir. Go on, sir. I said, what killed your father is about to kill you. <laughs> I said, did you hear me? He said, yes, sir. I said, no, let me repeat. I said, what killed your father is about to kill you. I know you may not understand the interpretation. I said, you have risen to a level where forces are waiting to disgrace you. 
I said, this is the same woman you started from scratch when there was nothing to show. Now something is showing she's no longer beautiful. I said, the thing that killed your father is calling for your head. I said, even if the, the breast is small, you have the money now, you can take her to US, let them make the thing big for you, man. <laughs> Am I correct? Yes, sir. I take, take her to US, let them make the thing big. <laughs> I said, besides, the breast is no longer for you, it's for the children. It didn't take five minutes. The man started crying. He quickly remembered. That's the same way the father was disgraced. He quickly remembered. I tell you, these forces, they are always waiting for you when you are about to hit a major breakthrough. I told pastor, canceling clothes. There is no demon anywhere. The demon is in his father's house. There is no the, the girl is the lady is not using any remote control. Which remote control? Any remote control can be controlled. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If they remote you, remote them back. At that point, his head began to correct. His head began to correct. That was when he now confessed. That there was a lady in the office. You know, these people, they are witchcraft. They will come and be doing their shake like this. <laughs> they know what they are looking for. You are laughing. They want to get you down. You know, my, inside my office, I keep one koboko. You dare come. I won't speak Lakosha. The cane is to give you the Lakosha. <laughs> you <will> run out. <laughs> I'm not playing. Any office I enter, I must enter with my Koboko. There are some demons you flog out. You don't speak in tongues. When you flog the person in Koboko, you hear go correct. God punish your father. This small boy, we don't rise now. Now you won't call knock for ground. Your papa. <laughs> so you must hear me. Do you know what it took God to move you from the state of smallness to where you are now? You must protect it, defend it. Now, these family forces, they attack you through dreams. I will mention some of them because many of you must have had such encounters. They attack you using masquerades. Anytime you see masquerade in your dream, the ancestral force of your family is about to scatter a breakthrough eyes, about to take place in your life. Don't tell me that you score masquerade. That's the reason why you are seeing masquerade. No. The last time I saw a masquerade in the village, it was passing in front of my compound. I don't beckon him to call. So he thought I wanted to give him money. So as he came, I just... He didn't know what I was there. I was just laughing, so you will not know what is in my mind. I just removed the masquerade and smashed it on the ground. I'm good at it. I just got bring me oil. Someone just brought an anointing oil for me. I said, Nidan, I'm praying for you now. <laughs> That's the last time they carried masquerade and passed there. They have told them, no pass there or in the around. Because physical masquerade is a representation of spiritual masquerade. And some people celebrate that. Mask will come and dance. That's how they will be dancing and be depositing things for you.
ancestral forces they hate family success and that is why they delight in caging everyone on the same spot we read it in Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 17 down he said and none did lift up his head meaning there is a benchmark place on families that's why you go to some families you still see their daughters 40 42 44 45 no one married there is a force there that must be broken I remember a service that was held in Asaba then in 2004 <laughs> breaking the yoke of generational causes one sister stood for the rest of her sisters and God showed up God showed up she cried she was praying and was crying she said no Lord this yoke must break this yoke must break Jesus did not die for nothing I am included in redemption and heaven answered heaven answered that same year that thing took place around july august before december four of them don't marry finish it will happen to someone here yeah. if you are saying amen say better amen yeah. i remember i told you one of our relation one of our relation his wife had a child before him, she married he too had a child before he married. So all his four children, the same thing catch them. All his four children, the same thing catch them. So all of them were having child before they married. All of them were. Four of them, the two boys and the two girls. So they repeated their family pattern. What their father suffered, they carried it in. You will not carry it. I say you will not carry it. And one of them, after she has seen all the mistakes, she now gave her life to Christ. She is now prophetess. I pray she is doing the right prophetess. Are you hearing me now? The same thing they suffered. Some other families, you will notice the force of marine covenants attacking progress. I won't forget one of my boys. The other sister called me from Dubai. She woke up that morning with a grip of fear. As she woke up, she has finished buying things, waiting for the dates for her flight. She saw a snake just came that in the dream and swallowed everything she bought. I said, that's the power in your family that has vowed that no one will rise. It's time for that snake to die. I said, are you ready? She did. Hmm. Meaning, who will confront it? Hear me? They must be confronted. I said, they must be confronted. If you don't confront them, they keep everyone, including you, in bondage. Hear me? Don't be afraid that they will attack where? When you have the blood and you have the anointing, you have the name of Jesus. It's time to kill that stronghold. There are also strong men caging families. Strong men. Spiritual strong men. Now like I said in the first service, when a curse is fired over a family, a demonic power is delegated to make sure it remains as it is. A demonic power is delegated to make sure that what was agreed in the evil covenant stays. Apostle Suleiman shared a testimony of a pastor who was suddenly doing well. I'm sure you must have heard the story. So all of a sudden, he thought it was a breakthrough to travel to the U.S. So he was getting preaching appointment one place to another so one night the thing now appeared to him Joseph he started shouting the blood of Jesus he said keep quiet we are from Ororope <laughs> <laughs> we are from where? Ororope. shouting the blood of Jesus he said keep quiet you will come back very soon and before you know what's happening, 
his doors began to shut. People that were giving him opportunity to minister, they no longer wanted to see him. And what he failed to deal with sent him back. He had to come back. What he didn't deal with, he had to start afresh. That's why no pastor rises if he has not dealt with his foundation. You can't shine. Shine go where? That's why, hear me, when you hear that I'm connected to prophetic grace, I know what I'm doing. I am connecting myself to generational altars. So that when they speak, they speak for my foundation to keep quiet so that this small boy can rise. You don't understand it. That's why you, you cannot believe it. You don't, you don't know it. If you, were, if you had joined us in that seven-day prayer and fasting, I did say that every man is an altar. Scripture says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with what? Men. So they have grown to become generational altars. They can silence a village. They can shut down the gods in any village. So when you connect yourself, <laughs> Scripture says, One shall chase a thousand. Two shall chase how many? So what Joseph didn't deal with, he had to come back and start dealing with them one by one until God relaunched him back again. I want to let you know, today we mark the end of your suffering. Yeah. And this ancestral forces is behind hardship and known achievement. Hardship. Hardship. There are families that you see no one is really doing well. No one. No one is really doing well. And when you are not doing well, you are a concern to your parents. They may not even know, but you now that is more enlightened should take this thing serious. Because by understanding, you are knowing what they didn't know. So you should stand to bail others out. No one is doing well. I remember a sister that um, they were contributing money for the elder brother. The one in the U.S. is a doctor. She is a doctor. And they are firstborn. It's not doing anything. So every time they will send money, he will tell them that he should send money for his upkeep. Firstborn. This is reserved for another day. It continued up until when they now say, okay, let him move to Lagos so that uh, they can make arrangements for him to come over to the U.S. They now moved him over to Lagos. The first house they got to, I said, no, 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 not this kind of house. So how can they come and keep him in this kind of house? Firstborn, are you not ashamed that your younger ones are contributing money for you so they now got him a house? So they delayed in sending money for furniture and other things. He started shouting. If you will waste more time, I'll go back to the village. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they now sent money. And now <laughs> it's, it's so funny. It's so funny. The mother was crying every day. They now bought things. Finally, it was time for him to marry. Then as you go and look for wife now, it was delaying. So they now went and brought one fine girl for him. Before you know what's happening, he left that house. He said, that's not the kind of girl you want to marry. So finally, finally, they now found one. So the girl was now the working machine. They will bring money, he will collect it, he will boost the money in pepper soup, drink beer. That was how the whole thing was going until the lady was now crying that uh, if this is married that is not interested, let him go, let her go. So they were now saying, okay, oh yeah, come to over to the U.S. now. Guess what happened? They have gotten visa, paid for his air ticket, immediately touched International Airport Lagos. He didn't reach one hour. I'm not going again. So the mother in the airport started crying. Hear me? When forces are after you, you will misbehave full time. 
with correct visa, etiquette. They still give you money to hold. You reach airport. I said, why? I'm not going again. That will let you know there's something working. The mother started crying. The brother called immediately. The sister called. He said, he said, no. he said not by force. To go not by force. Take your ticket. They bundled him into the car. They thought it was not, it was, it was not normal. He said, I'm not going again. I'm not going again. When ancestral powers are after an individual, he will continue to behave like a non-entity. The spirit of non-achievement. Hear me? Let me summarize it this way. When ancestral force is attacking a family, they will be doing things that will not be productive. Following irreasonable, unreasonable people. People that will be increasing your foolishness. I'm not joking. Go and find out what I am saying. And you know, what everybody is interested, home and abroad, achievement. If they call, what they are calling for? Achievement. The meaning of how are you is, what has happened? The meaning of how are you is, have you gotten a job? Have you gotten a house? Are you, are you doing a business? Is the business prospering? But you check it. The spirit of non-achievement has tied down the hands of everyone in the family. That is why I always say this. If you are the only one succeeding in your family, you are not yet succeeded. Make sure that the blessing enter their hand one by one. Because if they are not free, you are not free. If they are not doing well, you are not doing well. So you that is standing now, you must position them to stand. When they stand, your speed will go. Your speed will change. You will enter auto. But hear me, no one suffers in your family again. Amen. What is the cure? Number one, you must believe that the redemption of Jesus on the cross is to bring you and your family out. Why am I saying so? In the Old Testament, redemption was done lamb by lamb, family by family. Are you getting it now? One lamb per family. Time we fail us to read that in the book of Numbers. One lamb for family. But now, Jesus is the lamb that covers every family. So, the, the blood of Jesus is to redeem everyone in your family. So you must believe that the redemption that Jesus paid for with his blood is to bring everyone in your family out. You must believe it. You must believe it. That because you are redeemed, no one should suffer in your family again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number two, you must take advantage of the blood, the speaking blood. The eternal life of the spirit. The blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Now you must take the blood to your family foundation. In the first service I described a situation in engineering foundation whereby a structure that is already sitting and it is discovered that the foundation cannot carry. Nobody will live in the house. But in, in engineering foundation, there's what we call grouting. They will set manholes round about the house. Under the foundation, they will be injecting liquid cement, firing the foundation to have enough bearing capacity to hold the building. Now, what we are going to do is liken onto this. We are going to be engaging the blood to our family foundation. And whatever has vowed that no one in your family will rise, the blood will wipe them out. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And number three, you must engage the world. For by him all things we are made visible and invisible. Principalities and powers. It's not my word like hammer and like fire that break it. So whatever is holding anyone down in your family, the world can break it. So you engage the word. You must keep speaking the word. You must keep firing the word. It is fire. It is hammer. 
your family must be liberated. I said your family must be liberated. So the more you wire it, the more it's answering. And fourthly, you must believe in sacrifice. He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to soul, shall doubtless return. One man's sacrifice bailed Israel. David gave a sacrifice. Is he first Samuel 24, second Samuel 24? And the cause was stayed. So your sacrifice can end the cause. I'm doing it. I'm still doing it. I will not stop doing it. I'm doing for my head, doing for my family, doing for my brothers and sisters and everyone in my family. I keep going. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dream. Again and again. So we must keep going. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dream. So every time a captivity must be turned, a sacrifice must go. We keep going. Do you know what? Our forefathers, to continually keep us in bondage, they were always giving sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Am I saying the truth? They used to do it quarterly. Have mid-year before Christmas. How many of you used to go for New Year festival? Raise your hand or say the truth. Oh. You used to go for New Year festival. Do you know what you are going to do? You are going to fortify the evil covenant. Because before the New Year celebration, they have gone to appease the gods. They have gone to sacrifice to the gods. So it's not the celebration of wearing a fine shirt or going to places to go and eat a okazi soup. No. The covenant has been fortified. So you only came to tell them that I am involved. Am I lying? And lastly, lastly, tithing. Tell your neighbor tithing. Our great grandfathers used to give tithe of goats, plantain, to gods that don't know how to eat. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They used to give tithe of goats, cow, ram, chicken, tortoise. They will slaughter it and pour the blood, thinking that the gods have eaten it. What they are doing is re mortgaging our life, our families, and our destiny. But you will break it. Amen. Why? The blood speaketh better things. The blood has a breaking power. You must believe in the blood of Jesus. You must engage the, in a blood warfare to free your family. You must engage in a blood warfare. And lastly, prophetic blessings. Prophetic blessings. Every time prophetic blessings are declared, they open up the heavens over you and your family. They open up the heavens. They create a new spiritual horizon for things to work for you. They comfort your helpers in destiny. Your family connectors. Your family announcers. They come to you by prophetic blessings. People that make a mockery of prophetic blessings, they are, they are not fit to be here. Go to a shrine. Go to a shrine and stay. No one that scripture says, Believe the Lord that God and that shall be established. Believe also his prophet, so shall that do what? Prosper. So you are a channel to the blessing for your family. There is what we call evil family window. Who are evil family windows? These are people that go to visit native doctors. They open the door of attack for their families. Why others are connecting their families to prophetic blessings? These ones are visiting native doctors. But that will not be your portion. Rise up to your feet. Are you ready to confront it? We are going to pray. Lord, whatever mistake, my father, there's no time on us. We have five minutes to do this prayer. Whatever my father and my mother has made, that has brought every one of us in bondage. Lord, I ask for your mercy. In one minute, lift up your voice. I ask for your mercy. Every mistake my father and my mother have made.
that have put up in us in bondage that have must gauge our destinies that has caged our lives I ask for your mercy I ask for your mercy in the name of Jesus let your mercy prevail for me whatever sins my father and my mother have committed whichever evil altar they have visited that is opening up the door of the wicked against my life against my wife against my children against my family lord i ask for your mercy by the blood of jesus let your mercy prevail for me let your mercy show for me in the name of jesus christ i ask for your mercy in jesus name we pray all eyes closed all heads bow you are here you are not born again before this oil come to you place your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me lord jesus i come unto you today i know that i'm a sinner forgive me wash me with your precious blood i reject sin i reject satan come into my life be my lord be my savior in jesus name i pray if you pray that prayer with me come very quickly we are about to enter the second hold on, hold on, hold on. isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27 it shall come to pass on that day today is that day that the body shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing and scripture says his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge our floor and burn with unquenchable fire studio type this prayer now fire of god go down to my roots whatever is limiting me from my foundation through my family yoke destroyer by the anointing destroy the yoke fire of god go down to my roots whatever is limiting me from my foundation yoke destroyer by the anointing destroy the yoke if you pray that prayer with me come quickly i will anoint you here just come if you pray that prayer with me come quickly i'll be the one to anoint you just come right now pastors oh yeah fast jesus no yoke must remain whatever represents a generational yoke a limit in yoke lift up your voice and begin to pray fire of god go down to my roots come this way come this way go down to my roots whatever is limiting me from my family foundation by the anointing yoke destroyer destroy the yoke fire of god go down to my roots whatever is limiting me from my foundation family foundation yoke destroyer look at the prayer on the screen by the anointing destroy the yoke lift up your voice now and begin to pray did all these people pray this prayer with me pastor where's the oil let's make it quick please fire of god go down to my roots go down to my roots whatever is limiting me from my family foundation yoke destroyer come close please whatever is limiting me from my family foundation redano shakutalia rezekikete 
Lihando rosa kota Base kato En leperi de no shata Fire of God go down to my roots Whatever is limiting me from my foundation Yoke destroyer Destroy the yoke Yoke destroyer Destroy the yoke Yoke destroyer Destroy the yoke In the name of Jesus Yoke destroyer Destroy the yoke Yoke destroyer Destroy the yoke Berato na di elo shaka Ela pripadus atekato Lekatayata Yoke destroyer Destroy the yoke Fire of God Go down to my roots Whatever is limiting me from my foundation By your fire Let the yoke be destroyed Le katarianda la bosha Elado nike preke tu seze Le parati ate Le shudo Ne karate Indo pali Je kususu Ela prikata La ronde ketelia Yazese kekekete Liporo tekato Meswate la peradia Le karati aleta Reshopo Finish the rest Pastor Benga should help you Finish the rest If you have not been anointed come closer Lift up your voice and pray Fire of God Go down to my roots Whatever is limiting me from my family foundation look destroyer by the anointing destroy the yoke destroy the yoke destroy the yoke leria katalo resource kekekeke ipatola to le kuri katalo lisatera eklopebre ilata Yoke destroyer Destroy the yoke by the anointing Go down to my roots Yoke destroyer Go down to my roots Destroy the yoke of the wicked In Jesus name we have prayed Put your right hand on your head I pray representing Bishop David Oedekbo Whatever has limited you and your family The siege is over That family siege is over The strong man over your family Swell up and die That serpent swallowing prosperity, swallowing breakthrough. Die by fire! The evil bird destroying your family prosperity. You evil bird, be roasted by fire! Whoever is the physical strong man, the Satan has positioned. To make sure that no one lifts up his head in your family. 
Oh, you strong man. North, south, east, and west. Swell up and die. In the name of Jesus. I decree your family strong man be buried by fire. I decree your family strong man be buried by fire. Whatever is eating you up from your foundation. By the anointing on your head. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn them to ashes. Lick up the evil water. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Beginning from you. You will arise. Your family will arise. Your family will arise. So shall it be. In Jesus name we pray. Open your eyes. Those of you that came out now, just turn and follow this man.